welcome to The Wrap. I'm Renita Young here to take you through today's market action. So let's take a look at where markets closed to end September. Now, while markets were lower in the final trading day of the month and closed lower for the fourth consecutive week, the S&P 500 was down three quarters of a percent this week and fell nearly 5% for the month. The Dow ended September 3.5% lower, while the NASDAQ 100 dropped 5% and the small cap Russell 2000 dropped by 6%. If we take a look at the leading and lagging sectors of the month, energy was the only positive sector for the month of September and rallied 1.3% today as crude oil remains above $90 a barrel. Utilities were the worst performer in September, falling 7%, while consumer staples and financials also struggled. Now let's take a look at stories moving markets. The U.S. House of Representatives failed to pass a short-term funding bill as a government shutdown looms. And though it's unclear what the next move would be by House lawmakers, the Senate is considering a separate bill to keep the government open. But if nothing works, funding for the government would run out at 12.01 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. Nike shares soared almost 7% today after quarterly results came in mixed but better than feared. The company managed to chip away at its inventories by 10% and direct-to-consumer sales grew 6% year over year. Also, Nike reiterated its guidance, unlike a couple of its peers who recently had to cut their guidance. And Carnival beat expectations for third quarter results with revenue at an all-time high. And it was also Carnival's first quarterly profit since the COVID-19 pandemic appended the travel industry. But strong earnings were overshadowed by the outlook. Carnival expects an adjusted per share loss of between 18 and 10 cents. Let's look at what to watch for next week. While earnings are light, there's plenty of economic data. On Monday, construction spending and ISM manufacturing are released, and we'll hear from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. On Tuesday, the JOLTS report kicks off a busy week of employment data that continues on Wednesday with the ADP non-farm employment, as well as factory orders and durable goods. On Thursday, challenger job cuts, jobless claims, and trade balance data will come out. And then on Friday, we'll get the September jobs report and vehicle sales. That'll do it for The Wrap. I'm Renita Young, and remember to tune in 24-7 to schwabnetwork.com.